Good morning. Today, at the Palma Pioneer Pantry, we are going to be making some oatmeal bread. And we're going to discuss one of the main reasons that I wanted to start this YouTube channel. The oatmeal bread recipe is my grandmother's, and it's one of my favorite foods, and I will put the recipe down in the description. Um, so let's get started. I've got all of my great ingredients out here. At least I hope I remembered everything. And then we're gonna just chat and get this done. So one of the primary reasons that we decided to start this YouTube channel is to hold ourselves accountable, especially hold me accountable, as we try to build a more healthy and varied diet. Uh, this is particularly challenging for me, um, and I'm gonna explain that during this video. The first reason is, well, the first part of explaining that is from probably the most dramatic story about me that I remember from my childhood. Um, and this is me remembering, and my mom doesn't really remember the story anymore, so I don't know exactly how accurate this is, but when I was about five years old, um, my mom wanted me to try a slice of green apple and um, I didn't want to try it and she said kind of classic parenting move well you can't have anything else until you try this apple and I said fine and I went three days without any food <laughs> um, so she gave in and she never tried that tactic again. Um, before that, my mom remembers me eating basically anything, just like most young kids. Um, but after that, my diet was pretty limited. I ate, there were about 15 foods, maybe, maybe less, that I would willingly eat. Um, and it just, trying new foods would give me panic attacks, and so I just didn't do it. And my parents were great. They were very supportive. They made sure that there was always food that I could eat so that I got enough to eat. Um, but then when I was in eighth grade, I went on a trip um, with some people from my school to the Washington DC area and my parents didn't come. And I came home 10 days later and I had lost 10 pounds in 10 days. Um, so yeah, pretty scary for someone who was already stick skinny as it is. And after that, I just made sure that I brought my own food everywhere that I went to the point that when I became an adult and started traveling for work functions, or work trips, I would pack food in my suitcase to make sure that I had something to eat. Give me one second, I'm gonna get a spatula to get the rest of this honey out. So, pretty extreme, and I was going to some pretty extreme um, efforts to make sure that I never went hungry and also never had to eat foods that were outside of my predetermined diet. Um, now as I got older, I did um, try to expand my diet. I recognized that it wasn't particularly healthy and I knew that I needed to do better and so I I did manage to add some vegetables to my diet. I got to the point where I could eat some things if they were similar enough to something that I had already eaten. Um, if it was a simple enough food, I could try it without having panic attacks. That's how I learned to love watermelon and grapes. Um, because someone really wanted me to try them and I was more <laughs> I, I wanted to avoid the social um, stress more than I wanted to avoid a potential panic attack, and I didn't have one, and I actually really enjoyed them, so that was nice. 
but those experiences did not change my fear of trying new foods. So finally, in 2020, I decided that I was going to kick this and I was going to get professional help to get over this phobia that I had. Um, one second, my water's boiling. So I, I was going to get professional help to get over this phobia that I thought I had. And I searched online for therapists or organizations that dealt with phobias. Um, and I had a really hard time finding anything that said it worked with phobias. Um, and finally I found a place called the OCD and Anxiety Institute. It's in here in Utah and they listed phobias on their website as one of the things that they did. So I scheduled a, um, I don't remember what they called it, I scheduled a, an initial appointment and um, talked to a therapist and she diagnosed me with OCD. Um, so yeah, and we'll talk more about that in just a second. I need to get this boiling water cup and a half of boiling water, two and a half cups, excuse me, two and a half cups of boiling water into the mixer. Yes. So I try to pour all that water on the honey and the butter um, just to help melt them um, so that they'll mix together a little bit better. So I do have to run the mixer for a minute um, to get this mixed together, so we will be right back after that. Okay, so we've got that boiling water in there, mixed it all up. Um, I'm going to scrape down the sides of the bowl, and then we will add in the salt, um, a little bit of flour. Um, actually, we're going to add salt first so that it doesn't touch the yeast, because after we add the flour, we're going to add in a little bit of yeast, um, and then I'm going to be running the mixer quite a bit as I add the flour, so I'm not going to try to talk to you while I do that. And we will talk more about what OCD is and how I had it without knowing after I get everything mixed up and after the mixer finishes kneading the dough, we'll sit down and talk. Okay, so let's add the salt. try to just kind of sprinkle it so that it mixes easier. I don't know if that's a legitimate thing. And then I always add the first cup or so of flour. And I don't measure this exactly, so if I don't fill the cup all the way full, that's okay. Just, this is instant yeast, um, so it doesn't have to proof beforehand. Um, and I use, um, I, the, the recipe calls for packages, for one package or two since I'm doubling it. Um, but I just use three tablespoons because the recipe also, the original recipe uses all purpose flour and I like it better with whole wheat. So I upped the yeast just a little bit to help with that weight. forgot 
I'm supposed to add two cups of cold water after I add the boiling water and mix it up. So I'm just going to add that now so that I have enough liquid in my bread dough. It's supposed to cool the water off so it doesn't kill the yeast. Um, hopefully I didn't kill the yeast already. Um, this is what I get for putting my ingredients in the fridge and not pulling it out beforehand. But, so we've added those two cups of water and then we'll just continue adding the flour. Okay, so I just have to let this mix for about 10 minutes. It does the kneading for me. And while it does that, let's talk a little bit more about my OCD diagnosis. So I always thought that OCD was like in that TV show Monk, where you wash your hands all the time and try to keep things perfectly clean, perfectly in order. You have to line all the pencils up just so. And so I never thought that I had OCD because I didn't do any of those things. But my therapist explained to me that OCD or obsessive compulsive disorder is basically just anything that you obsess about and have compulsive behaviors that you have to do um, because of that obsession. And those behaviors are not always doing something. Sometimes they're thoughts and sometimes they are avoidance. And I had a definite avoidance problem. It was a compulsion. Um, OCD makes things seem dangerous, even when they're not necessarily dangerous, and it makes things seem more dangerous than they are. And if you give in to, so the compulsions that you feel because of this dangerous thing, your brain tells you that those compulsions will make this dangerous thing less dangerous. So my brain told me, well, if you just avoid the food, nothing bad will happen. Um, but the thing is, if you always give in to those compulsions and avoid the food or 
wash your hands or organize the pencils or whatever little things, that tells your brain that was a dangerous thing and we just we just made it better. And then your brain goes, oh, this is dangerous? You, you need to do your compulsion again. And it just is this vicious cycle and it just makes it worse and worse. The only treatment for OCD that actually works is something called um, exposure therapy. And exposure therapy is basically where you expose yourself to your fears over and over again and while you're doing that you refuse to do any of your compulsions and you try to act like you're not afraid and let me tell you that is difficult um, I also learned that I have sensory processing disorder which basically means that I get overwhelmed by sensations um, with mine is mine is particularly with food with taste and texture and so the more that I experience these new and different or overwhelming tastes and textures, the worse I feel. Um, and it just builds and builds until it eventually it's a actually like a physical sensation of pain. Um, and between those two things, I was, I was going to have a rough go of it. But I did um, a six week intensive outpatient therapy program through the OCD and Anxiety Institute. And basically, Monday through Friday, every day, I spent three hours in therapy, and at least two of those hours were spent trying and eating foods that either I had never eaten or tried before or continued to frighten me. And <laughs> It was so hard. Um, so for me, usually each compulsion compulsion comes with a, a specific thought or a fear behind it. Um, and mine was completely irrational, but every time I tried to put food in my mouth and chew it up and swallow it, every time I thought about doing that, my brain would try to convince me that I was going to die. Not that I was going to get sick or throw up or gag or have a stomach bug or anything like that. No, it. as soon as I swallowed the food, I was going to die. And once again, OCD is a little bit weird. And you can't treat OCD by convincing yourself, no, I'm not going to die. You just have to accept it. Because the more you try to convince yourself that you're not going to die, the more OCD says but this is clearly dangerous, so you probably are. Um, so you just kind of have to accept, well, maybe I will die <laughs> if I take this next bite of food. And so I spent six weeks telling myself, well, maybe I will die when I take this next bite of food. And slowly, I was able to take bites without holding the fork in front of my face for 10 minutes. Um, I was able to chew and swallow without grimacing like I was in terrible pain or dying. I found ways to use calming sensations like soft blankets or um, rubbing my finger through my hair um, and those things kind of helped with the sensory processing and slowly it got easier and easier to try new things and eat more of them. And so at this point I'm able to eat new and unfamiliar foods fairly easily. It depends on how complex they are, but I, I can do it. So therapy really helped me. So as we get back to finishing up this bread, we will talk more about how that affects my life now. And we're back. So now that the bread is all mixed and kneaded, we are going to turn it out form it into loaves. Um, I have my bread pans here. And I'm actually going to grease these before I turn that out. So I just, I use butter to grease them. You can use a paper towel. I try not to use paper towels as much as possible so I have these, they're clean, they're just pieces of old t-shirts because um, then they don't leave any lint. 
Um, and I just take and get some room temperature butter and mix it. I'll wipe it just with my finger and the towel. Okay. I use plenty of butter because I have found that if I don't, it sticks. And I've tried using like cooking spray um, or like olive oil or vegetable oil. And I just, anytime I don't use butter, I don't know if I just am not as good at coating the pan when I can't see it as well, but I, it sticks every time. So I use butter. And this recipe, um, it makes two nine by five loaves, the recipe does. Um, I usually double the recipe and make five four by eight loaves because I don't have any nine by five pans um, and I want more bread. And then I will, I'll usually keep one loaf out and put the rest in the freezer. Um, that way we just have this nice oatmeal bread for breakfast and snacks and sandwiches if we run out of other bread. It's a little too good with just plain butter, I think, for using on sandwiches, but when we run out of bread, I do use it for sandwiches. Um, and then we just have it available for the next, I don't know, month, month and a half. Anyway, I'm going to get these greased up and then we'll be right back. Okay, so that was the last bread pan. I've just got these sitting on the stove behind me because I don't have a ton of space on my workspace. So we'll set aside the butter. And then my grandmother always made rolled out or shaped her bread on an oiled surface rather than a floured surface. So that's how I usually make her bread. And I just use vegetable oil because it's cheap and it's not, not much of it actually gets into the bread. So I'm just going to spread out some oil here. See, I should have buttered those pans while the bread was mixing because it started to rise um, and it's really filled out the mixer. It's going to make it a little bit more difficult to get it out. But luckily, this um, because I make my bread in a Bosch, you generally don't need a first rise and a second rise like you do with lots of breads. So we'll just count this as a first rise, and I don't think I'm going to need these, I'm just going to use my hand. And then we will kind of punch it down as we pull it out of the mixer. And this bread dough is really quite sticky. Um, when you're making bread with whole wheat flour, you really want it to be still pretty sticky um, when you're done kneading and mixing everything because that is how you could, well because if you add enough flour that it's not sticky anymore it gets really really dense um, and dense bread's just not as good as light fluffy bread so while I kind of push this down and knead it back into a ball that we can easily separate. Let's go back to that topic of OCD. So as I said, things are much easier for me now um, than they were before I did that therapy, but things are still really, really hard. Um, I have years. I mean, nearly 30 years of avoidance behavior built up in my shopping habits, in foods that I, foods that I just reach for all the time. Um, and so 
it's not natural for me to reach for anything that's outside of that easy diet. I don't have a ton of cooking knowledge or experience because I didn't eat it so I never had the opportunity to cook it. Um, and then it's still hard to try and or to eat new foods, any, especially anything with mixed textures or strong flavors, any of those things, it's still, I still have to accept with that first bite, okay, I just might die. And I still have to struggle to not exhibit those fear behaviors and let my body think, oh, this is dangerous. Um, and it still really affects my sensory processing. Um, it still sometimes is painful to eat new foods for long periods of time. Um, and it takes me a long time to eat a serving of a new food. But I have a son now, um, and I want him to grow up with a good relationship with food and I want him to have a varied and healthy diet. Um, and I mean, I also married a man who doesn't have my OCD problems, and while he is very good about just eating what I cook or making something for himself, I'd like to <laughs> be able to cook and cook things and feed him something that tastes good to a normal palate, um, and to do that on a regular basis. And so, here we are, um, learning to cook, trying new recipes, trying new foods, and building a more healthy life. So that is one of the primary reasons that I started this channel, that we started this channel. Um, and I am really grateful. So far, it has definitely been helpful. Um, to push me to try new recipes, to try new foods, to actually eat more of those foods that I make that are not necessarily something that I'm comfortable eating a full serving of. And as we go forward, I will continue to try new recipes. If you have any recipes that you think would be good kind of stepping stones, so something that is not crazy flavorful, but has a couple different textures in it, or has a few different textures, but it's a pretty homogenous and not overwhelming flavor. Uh, put them down in the comments and let me know, um, and I'll try them. Um, I'm hoping that as I start getting more and more suggestions of food that we could eat, um, or foods that I can try. I'm hoping to do at least one recipe a week that is suggested by our subscribers. Um, and so we'll work on adding that in. Um, right now, basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to shape these loaves and get them approximately the same size. Um, I and then I am, as you can, as you see me shaping, I am kind of tucking the edges and pulling the top tight. I might not have let it knead for quite long enough because um, the top is having a pretty rough time um, forming that kind of tight skin, but it'll be fine because this bread is not sandwich bread and it just tastes so good. And so if it doesn't look great, we don't really care. Um, so I think those are all pretty good size. So I'm just gonna pop them each in a loaf pan. We'll let them rise for an hour or so. And then you stick them in the oven at somewhere between 350 and 375 for 15 to 20. Um, sometimes it takes 30 minutes, um, but usually it's between 15 and 20 minutes. And I'll show you when they come out of the oven. So the bread's done. I can never wait until it cools to cut into that first loaf and butter up that first slice. It's just so delicious. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. If you did enjoy it, please give us a thumbs up. If you know somebody with OCD, please share this video with them so they can hear about my experience. If you're interested in following our journey as we continue to expand our diet and eat more healthy and more varied things, please subscribe. I will leave a playlist here with all of our videos and I'll leave a video here with the video of what we ate last week so you kind of get a sense of where we are right now. <laughs> Um, I'm telling you now, we eat a lot of the same thing. I'm hoping to fix that. Thank you for going along on this journey with us and for hanging out with me here at the Palma Pioneer Pantry.